Good morning. Thank you again for being here today. And before we even begin, I just want to let you know that, that we're praying for you, praying for your families. I know praying for job situations and the stress that could be coming upon that. And we're just praying that God will speak to you. And, and throughout this morning, I pray that you hear something. As a matter of fact, I know God will speak something to you. And again, last few weeks, we've been looking at peace and the beautiful gift of peace that God gives us. And we know that one of the biggest detriments to peace is worry, and it just robs us of our peace. And we know that God gives us that. And what we're going to begin to look at today and even talk about for the last few weeks is something that God gives us. And I think we, we seem to forget, and it's freedom. Freedom. Freedom is a theme that you see and find all throughout the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation. And when you look at the Old Testament, you see time and again how God's people, the Israelites, would lose their freedom to some foreign government, usually because they disobeyed God. You see, that right there should tell us something. If we aren't living in freedom, then maybe it's because we've surrendered our freedom to something or someone else. You see, not only does God give us peace, but He gives us freedom. Freedom from sin, guilt, shame, and bondage. And also, something that we lose sight of is freedom from fear. We seem to forget many of these truths as we go about our days, as we go about our weeks. And this was something that the Israelites would do also. They would go to Moses and complain about the fact that they didn't have enough food or water, and they wanted to go back to Egypt, forgetting the freedom that God had purchased them. You see, if you recall the term fear, or do not be afraid, or fear not, it is in the Bible upwards of 365 times. It's obviously a bent that we as humans have. We have a tendency to, to worry. We have a tendency to fear. We seem to do that normally. And fear, similar to worry, is a bully that taunts us and can keep us frozen in our place. It keeps us from moving forward, and it can literally keep us from hearing God's voice in our lives. Fear causes us to hide from everyone, including God. You look no farther than Adam and Eve in the garden. They actually hid from God and did their best to cover themselves. Genesis 3 says this, When the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking about in the garden. So they hid from the Lord among the trees. Then the Lord called to the man, Where are you? Adam replied, I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. Now listen to what he says here. Adam says, I was afraid. I was afraid. Sin caused him to fear. Sin caused him to hide. And the first words that Adam hears from God after Adam says, I was afraid, God says, who told you? Who told you? See, fear really means we're listening to the wrong voice. It drowns out God and we hide. Fear will cause us to run away from the one person who brings us freedom from fear, God. And so we're going to look today as you see that. And, and we're going to fast forward to John, and we're going to look at chapter 14, the statement that Jesus makes. And before we even get into that, I want to look at the setting. In John 12, Jesus has told his followers, look, I'm, I'm going to die. This is the end is coming soon. So that's going on in John 12. And then in John 13, during the Last Supper, Jesus lets the disciples know that one of those with him is actually going to betray Jesus. So think about what the disciples are thinking. Jesus, the one that they've placed their full trust in, says he's, he's going to go away, he's going to die. John 13, during the Last Supper, Jesus says, Look, one of you that is here with me will betray me. And then at the very end of John 13, Jesus looks to Peter and says, Not only that, Peter, you will deny three times that you know me. Think about what the disciples would have been thinking and feeling at that time. They would have been thinking and having fear. They would have been anxious. They would have been so worried about what is going to happen. 
You see, they knew that not only were the leaders and the religious leaders upset with Jesus, but they were upset with anybody following him. If you recall, in John chapter 11, Lazarus is raised from the dead. And if you continue looking at the story, you see that many people, because of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead, many people put their faith in Jesus. This made the religious leaders upset with Lazarus also. So the disciples knew that what is going on? Everything seems to be changing. This is a lot going on in their heart, in their minds, in their souls. Jesus knows this. Jesus can read a room pretty well. He doesn't leave them in this place of fear and trouble and anxiety and worry. He says these very simple words in John 14. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Do not allow your heart to be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. These are literally the words of the shepherd. And literally the words of the good shepherd comforting his frightened, anxious sheep. I mean, the word heart is used over 800 times in the Bible, and it's literally the center of our spiritual and physical life. It's really where we are and who we are. And he says, look, don't allow your heart to be troubled. The word troubled in other times in the Bible is translated terrified. And troubled has the similar meaning to what you would find in a washing machine. It agitates back and forth. And it stresses us out and produces fear in our lives. I mean, I I have a pair of blue jeans that I really like. and, And I would wear them every day if I could. And as I continue to throw them in the wash and pull them back out, I realize more and more they're getting agitated too much. They're getting stressed out in spots. There is a little hole that is formed And that is what happens to us. We allow fear to consume us and we start getting so stressed out, so troubled. And there's holes that begin to arise in our life. And Jesus is telling his followers, don't allow your heart to be troubled. You see, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. If there were never troubles, this statement would not have needed to be made. Jesus is painting a real picture. Troubles can come. The question becomes how we're going to handle it or what we're going to do. See, the Passion Translation really seems to flesh this out a little bit better. It says in John 14, Don't worry. Don't surrender to your fear. Don't give in to your fear. It goes on and says, For you've believed in God. Now trust and believe in me also. You see, when you look at what Jesus is saying, he says literally, don't let. Don't let. Basically, the choice is ours. We can allow that fear to stay or that trouble to remain, or we can do what Jesus says here. We can allow fear to reign, or we can allow our trust in Jesus to supersede those feelings. Think about it. When you think about what Jesus was saying, he knew what was coming up for him. Betrayal mock trial, beatings, and ultimately crucified. And yet here he is speaking these words of comfort to you and to me. This is just another example of the selflessness of Jesus. And what Jesus is telling these followers of his and telling us, he says, look, believe in God and believe in Jesus. These men, these Jewish men that he was talking to, they would have had no problem believing in God. That's how they were raised. And so you hear this, it's really kind of a declarative statement. You believe in God, it's what they do already. Now believe in Him also. Jesus telling us right here that if we just believe and trust in Him, it will begin to keep the fear at bay. You see, without trusting in Jesus, we will be troubled. And see, without trusting Jesus, fear will remain. And we need to take those fears to Him. The psalmist in Psalm 56 writes this, In the day that I am afraid, I lay all my fears before you and trust in you with all my heart. Don't let your heart be troubled. I lay all my fears before you, God, and trust in you with all my heart. So the question then you have to ask is, is where do you go 
with your fears? Do you go to God or do you go to Facebook? Do you go to him and lay those fears before him or do you continue to think about them and dwell on them or do you really give them to him? You see, the choice is ours and the gift is freedom. And so I continually in looking at this passage, you see a couple statements that Jesus makes farther down because we have to ask ourselves, who or what are we really trusting in? When troubles come, who do we go to? Who or what do we believe? In John 14, 4, Jesus is talking and he says, look, I'm going to go away. And then he says, you know the place to where I'm going. To which Thomas responds, we don't know, Lord. We have no idea where you are going. So how can we know the way? And I think that's where many of us reside. We literally go, okay, you're saying, let your hearts not be troubled. But where do I go? I don't know how to do this. We're so like Thomas. The fact is we should know. Jesus makes a statement a little farther down. And I'm going to skip a few verses. And he's talking to Philip and he says this in verse 9. He says, if I've been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you still don't know who I am. This is what I, I read this. And I think how often we allow our hearts to be troubled. And we forget who Jesus is is. We forget that he is trustworthy. We forget that he is true. We forget the statement, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and believe also in me. We forget those statements. And he looks at Philip and says, don't you know who I am? I never want us to be in that position where we don't know who he is. Don't allow fear to control you. You see, verse 6, I'm going to skip back, John 14, 6. Jesus gives us who he is. He says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. This well-known verse speaks of pure devotion to Jesus. Look at what he's saying. It's more than just the way to salvation. The statement is a promise and a word of comfort to you to his disciples. He's letting us know that he himself is all that they need, that there's no need to panic, no need to search desperately for a secret map. Pure devotion to Jesus, trusting in him, keeps the fears at bay. Following him is the direction to not allowing fear to consume our hearts, our minds, and our souls. He says, you know the way, you know the truth, and you know the life. Trust him. Be purely and totally devoted to Him. You see, I've brushed on this a couple times in the last few weeks, and I think it is sometimes a problem that we have, is we keep allowing ourselves to be distracted. We keep having divided devotion. And Paul speaks to, speaks to this in 2 Corinthians 11, when he writes, Look, I fear that somehow your pure and undivided devotion to Christ will be corrupted just as Eve was deceived by the cunning ways of the serpent. And sometimes when I read that, and, and you have to think about where Adam and Eve were. We mentioned it a little bit earlier, the Garden of Eden, a beautiful, beautiful place to be. A place where God would walk with them, with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. And yet they were deceived. If it can happen there, it can happen here. See, this is why I'm saying we need to make sure that we're doing and following fully and completely after Jesus. That we're laying those fears that come your way, that you're laying them in front of God and you're trusting Him. You see, you have to remember, Jesus is our good shepherd. And the freedom from fear that, that we're looking at today, it's also mentioned in another psalm. Again, one of the most popular psalms out there, Psalm 23. And in going through a small group that I've been going through, it just seeing more and more how he so much and so truly is our good shepherd. And it says this in Psalm 23 and verse 4. David writes, I will fear no evil. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you, O God, are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I mean, the picture that David is speaking of here 
is a shepherd and, and talking about a shepherd who's unable to get his flock, to get his sheep back to the fold before dark. Sheep, being rather skittish and excitable, could truly be bothered and afraid of the dark. So in the dark, the shepherd would move from the back of his flock to the middle so the sheep could gather around him. I mean, what a beautiful picture. What a beautiful illustration that is painted of a caring God that never leaves us alone in the dark. And as a matter of fact, he runs and stands among us to be with us, to calm our fears. This is Jesus. You see, he doesn't want fear to be in your life, so he gathers you. And then when you continue to look at it, you see that he has this rod and this staff. You see that one of the reasons that he has a rod and a staff, it's to assure the sheep of his presence, the presence of the shepherd. For when you and I begin to fully grasp and understand that he's always with us, it will begin to allay the fears that are trying to take hold of your heart, your mind, and your soul. You don't need to do it. He doesn't want us to. We don't want to serve fear. We want to serve God. And so what do we do as we continue to see this? We, we bring our fears to God. We believe and we have faith that comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And we stay devoted to God and to Him alone. We don't allow ourselves to be divided in many different ways. For we hear reports all the time and we wonder what to believe and we're putting all this stuff in. That's where fears come. So we need to get back to the very roots. And very simply, look at the words of Jesus. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe in me too, is what he's saying. And we go to him. We don't give in or surrender ourselves to fear. Let yourself, honestly, you go to God, you get into his word. You begin to drown out the voices that are trying to speak so negative. And you look at what God's word says. Psalm 23, Psalm 56, John 14. There you go. Gives you a, a starting point to learn, you know what? God really does care about me. That yes, the fears may come, but it's not something we have to give into. And I know and I believe that fear won't be the deciding factor in your life. You're a child of the ever-living God. He knows where you are. He knows what's going on in your life. Nothing that's going on to you today is throwing you for a loop. He cares too much about you. He's not taken by surprise. So just come to Him. Come to Him. And I guarantee you'll start to be able to live that. Your heart won't be troubled and you won't be afraid. Go ahead and bow your heads as I speak this blessing. Father, we thank you so much for what you're doing in our hearts and our minds. And I pray for everybody hearing this that as they go today and this week, I speak peace in their hearts, minds, and soul. That fear has no place and will not come near their dwelling. For the peace of God will rule and reign in their hearts as they go day by day trusting in you first and foremost in every area of their life. In the name of Jesus, we all say amen, amen. Thanks again. Thanks so much for being here. Have a great day and a wonderful week.